Hello and welcome to the garden. Well this video is all about sweet corn and those side shoots that form at or just below ground level, sometimes called suckers, sometimes known as tillers. So this is probably going to be a little bit controversial because it is a very common suggestion to remove those suckers or tillers and I don't do that and I thought I would just explain in this video what they are, why they form, what it indicates when they develop and why I don't take them away. So I'm in the polytunnel here and this is the hybrid variety Swift and you can just see that the male tassels are starting to appear. So it won't be long before we see the ears start to develop. In fact, you won't be able to see it on the camera, but I can see one forming lower down the stem. So on a sweet corn plant, you have these nodes up the stem and side shoots will develop in those nodes. And when they develop above ground, they turn into these. Now, it's going to be a while before we see anything here, but this is what will eventually carry the cob and the female silks. Um, now, when they start to form at a node below ground, you get what is termed a sucker or tiller. You can see one just starting here. This is formed from way down. You can, you can feel that there are two distinct stems here and this one comes off of this parent plant below ground. There's a really large example on this one. This is a slightly more vigorous specimen so this is a bit more developed and you can see that down the bottom it's well it will still be attached to the parent plant but it, it is almost a separate entity. And here's another example now this one is quite small and flimsy at the moment. Now if you are going to remove these this is probably the best stage to do it at when they're still quite small and the chances of causing significant damage here are much lower. If you're removing a larger sucker there is a danger that you could harm the parent plant. So the development of those side shoots is an entirely normal part of the growth habit of the plant and it's common amongst the grasses and that sort of thing will happen with other cereal crops. So those nodes that form shoots below the ground, they carry on growing exactly like the main plant. They're smaller versions because they only start into development later in the season and generally they don't then get to produce ears. Sometimes they will and it depends on the sort of corn and the time of year when they show up, whether, whether there's enough time in the season for that plant to actually produce. It's a little bit like a side shoot on a cordon tomato. Those side shoots that develop in the leaf axils, well, they grow on to behave exactly like the parent plant, the main stem, in that they will produce leaves and fruit trusses and more side shoots. And that's why you can pluck those side shoots off, pop them up, and they will root and develop into a new plant. So the reason that it is so often suggested to remove them is because it's thought that the growth of these side shoots detracts from the development of the main stem. And certainly for us as gardeners, when we're growing sweet corn, it's the ears that form on the main stem that we're really after. We're not interested in the overall biomass or anything else. There's no reason for us to grow on those side shoots. So it's an entirely logical reason to remove them but actually I'm pretty sure it's not correct because I've looked at a fair bit of research on this subject. So I find practical gardening a very interesting subject to study because there are so many different and equally valid ways of going about various tasks and I love watching other videos. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it, there's always something new to learn and alternative methods to look at. And I might 
I might not adopt them, but every now and then I'll, I'll see something that I like the look of and think, yeah, I think that would work well in my own garden and give it a try. That being said, there are also a large number of gardening myths. And I think that's partly because of the way we learn how to garden. Very often we're picking it up from our parents or our grandparents or fellow gardeners. And there are lots of things that were, for entirely sensible reasons, thought to be true, but actually on closer inspection turn out not to be. A common example is that you shouldn't water during bright sunlight because the droplets that form on the leaves act as lenses and cause the leaves to be burnt. That is incredibly common, but it's not true. That is a gardening myth. And I'm almost certain that in my videos somewhere, you'll be able to find some hidden gardening myths practices that I follow that actually don't stand up to scientific scrutiny. Of course it doesn't matter. So long as what we're doing in our gardens works for us, that's all that matters. I just wanted to say that because if you've just gone round and pulled all the suckers or tillers off of your sweet corn, it's not a big problem. People have been doing that for decades and the sweet corn will still grow and probably very nicely too. So the reason that I don't do it is because research has shown that either the development of those side shoots is benign or in fact very often their removal is detrimental. So the appearance of those side shoots varies quite a bit from variety to variety and it also varies with conditions. So if you plant in poor soil or you plant very close together, you're much less likely to get those suckers or tillers. As gardeners, we've very often got rather rich soil. We're always spreading compost and manures around the garden and the conditions that we are growing our sweet corn in are likely to be quite fertile. We may also space the plants out quite well. Now, when I put these in, I was worried about how close together they were, but actually for a sweet corn planting, they're a good distance apart. And those two factors are probably the most important in terms of tillering. So actually the development of these side shoots is a good sign. It's a sign that you've given them good fertile soil, that there's plenty of moisture and the, and the spacing is comfortable. It's an entirely natural response of the plant. It's part of their, their growth and reproduction. Although there is a connection between the vascular tissues of the, the parent and the side shoot, those side shoots do develop their own root system and research has shown that the, the overall volume of the root system is much larger in plants that have the side shoots than those that don't. So they're developing a, a larger root system to support that new growth. And of course, those side shoots, they're producing leaves, they're photosynthesizing, and they're producing plant sugars. Now, if those side shoots were taking their water and nutrients and plant sugars from the parent plant, so if they were acting like a, a parasite, then it would make perfect sense to remove them. But research has actually shown that the removal of those side shoots can be detrimental to the yield. You might end up with smaller ears than you would if you had left them on. Now, when those side shoots don't develop their own cobs, it's also been shown that there is a transferal of sugars from the side shoot to the main plant. And that's where it can be really quite beneficial to leave them in place. Overall, the more greenery you've got, as long as it's healthy green growth, it's gonna be photosynthesizing and it's gonna be producing 
more of those carbohydrates. And those side shoots appear when there is an abundance of fertile soil and, and moisture. So it's not really the case that they are leaching from the parent plant. And in fact, later on, they might be sending some goodness into your main cobs. So it's really easy to see where the idea might have come from that these side shoots are detrimental to the parent plant. It makes perfect sense. It's just that multiple studies have found that it's not really the case. And that's why I leave them alone. So as gardening myths go, this isn't a particularly troublesome one because people remove those suckers regularly and still get great cobs of corn. There is, of course, the possibility of causing a little bit of damage to the parent plant when you do remove them. And if I were going to do it, I would do it when they're small. And I would think probably about cutting them rather than ripping them off because the last thing you want to do is damage that parent plant because that's where we're going to get our cobs. So whether you're removing your suckers or leaving them in place, I hope you get a great crop this year. But that is it for this video. Thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now.